So in this video, I'm going to take uh, americium-241 sources that I got out of some smoke detectors and dissolve off the americium dioxide with hydrochloric acid. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is check to see whether or not the metal source that the americium dioxide is attached to is a metal that's soluble in hydrochloric acid. I think that it's stainless steel, in which case it would be soluble in hydrochloric acid but would dissolve slowly enough that it probably wouldn't actually be a problem. It however also could be aluminum, in which case it would be really soluble in the hydrochloric acid and would probably dissolve quickly enough that I couldn't realistically expect to remove the americium from the source without dissolving so much of it that it wouldn't really be a very useful process. And I will expose a, a little bit of the metal, uh, the back of it, to some hydrochloric acid. You can see the acid there. I haven't gotten the americium sources out. And if it doesn't dissolve, then I will soak them in concentrated hydrochloric acid and then take the sources out and let the solution evaporate and then look for activity uh, in the bottom of the test tube after the water is evaporated and um, I'm also going to look for residual activity on the sources after the americium has been dissolved off. Now according to internet sources that I've looked at uh, americium dioxide does dissolve in hydrochloric acid. Okay so here are the americium sources uh, that come out of the smoke detectors. See if I can get this to focus better close up. Oh yes, there we go. Okay, so you see they are sort of T-shaped. There's a wide back and then a narrow stub coming up from them. And then there's a central little spot, a depression in the end of the stub. The That depression is where the americium dioxide is deposited. Now the activity isn't very strong outside the test tube um, but still there's a slight increase. Slight above background you can see the needle on the detector move. Uh, I'm having trouble with focus. There we go. Okay there you can see it. That's the detector. It's on its most, or is it on its least sensitive setting, so it's not going to notice anything really. Let me actually change that really quickly to its most sensitive setting. Okay, now it's on its most sensitive setting. Let's stick the americium by the detector head again, the Mueller tube. Get it in a good position. You can see the needle has moved to something more noticeable, definitely above background, a few times background. These only emit radiation in one direction, so the uh, it's kind of hard to get much of a signal because very few of them are going to be aiming in the direction of the detector, and also the glass is in the way. But anyway, I'm going to have to break the top off the ampule, and then... Uh, after I've broken the ampule open and taken these out, I will hold an individual one up to the detector so you can see what the unblocked uh, gamma beta emission is. And finally I'll do that test with the HCL. And then after I've done the test with the HCL, if it turns out that it doesn't dissolve the metal source body, then I'll add as little HCl as possible because I don't want it to take a long time to evaporate down to the sources and then I'll let it sit for a while. I will pick one out and when no more activity can be detected on it I'll know all the americium has gone into the solution and I will take the sources out carefully one by one and then let the solution evaporate down and see if I get a point of high activity at the bottom of the test tube which would suggest all the americium-241 had been deposited at the bottom of the tube. To break open the flame sealed glass ampule I just used those pliers there which are actually for bassoon reed making 
to uh, break the top off of the ampule. So now I'm going to show you what these sources give as far as a response goes when held unimpeded straight up to the detector. So I don't know, I'll just take one at random. Okay, so coming over here, you can see even off of just one, the response is already more significant than all of them through the glass. You can see I'm just holding it straight to the detector. So that's the response that one of these gives. So to show you what the activity of all of them together looks like more effectively, I set them all out in a bunch here and I took the metal case off of the end of the Mueller tube so I can get them right up close. You can see, there you go, it's overwhelming the most sensitive setting. Let's turn it down one, see if it still gets something noticeable. And it'll take a little while for the needle to fall. Let's take it off of the sources for a while so it'll fall quicker. So this is on the middle setting. So it's times 10 instead of times 1. Oh, it's pushing it all the way up, even on the times 10 setting. Let's turn it down to the times 100 sensitivity. So that's falling quickly. Now let's see what that gets to on the times 100. The cord's in the way but it's at the 0.1 milliroentgens per hour mark uh, which is like the 50 counts per minute mark so times 100 that's um, 5,000 so about 5,000 counts per minute Okay, so now I'm going to test to make sure that the body of the source won't dissolve in hydrochloric acid. I've got 37% concentrated hydrochloric acid there, and I'm going to get a little drop of the acid on that plastic bottle cap. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some out into the cap of the hydrochloric acid bottle there, and then I'm going to just use this birthday candle here to put a little drop on there and then I'll set one of the sources in it face up so that uh, uh, I don't dissolve any of the americium off prematurely. Okay, so just need to get a little bit in there. We don't need much for this test. That's more than enough. I'll be pouring a lot of that back into the jar or bottle. Okay, so now you dip the candle in, okay, a little bit more, a little bit more, there we go. So now let's take this source here, let's touch it to the acid. Is it attacking it? Let's see, whoops. Focus that. It does not appear to be attacking it. It's fuming slightly. Let's put this back in the main bottle. It's so concentrated it is fuming a little. Okay, so that's where it's at now. Let's just focus that so you can see it better. It might be attacking the metal a little bit. That could be tolerable though, if it's not attacking it very much. It dissolves off the... Ah, oh, it is attacking it a little bit, yeah. I'm going to clean that off and then check it out and see how much it attacked. Uh, it doesn't attack it very much though, it's pretty slow. So I'll probably still try and dissolve off the americium 
So what I want to do is actually an intermediate test where I sacrifice one source and try and dissolve the americium off and basically see if any activity is left after it's been fully immersed in the hydrochloric acid. Once I've uh, succeeded in rem removing the americium from uh, one of them and shown that it really does work, then I'll try the whole batch. Okay, so I inspected it. The corrosion was only slight, but it was too hard to film because it was so small. Now I'm using this flask here, this little round flask with a flat bottom, as a test tube stand. I'm going to add a tiny bit of hydrochloric acid and then wait about 10 minutes. Um, then take the source out and check it for activity. Okay, so at the last minute, I decided to check the activity of the source before putting it in the acid just to see what it's at for a comparison. So that's the activity of the americium source before treatment with acid. We'll see what it is after. So I took the source out, rinsed it off, dried it off, and looked for activity. The activity was exactly the same as it was initially after like 20 minutes, it was still around 1.1 uh, milliroentgens per hour, so something like 600 counts per minute or something like that. And after an hour and a half, I pulled it out again, and it still hadn't dropped at all. Um, I'm going to leave it in overnight, and we'll see what happens. My guess, though, is it won't dissolve off. So first, the green color seems to be from the fact that while the americium isn't dissolving off, the uh, metal case is, and I think that's like dissolved iron or something, or nickel, or something in solution. I'm not sure what, but some probably first row transition metal in solution. Uh, I think the americium is actually under an extremely thin layer of gold, and that's what's keeping it from dissolving. I mean, I'll just let it sit in there overnight, but I'm probably not going to try it with those because I think that it's just not going to be that easy to remove the americium from these sources. Oh well. I mean, at least I learned something about the structure of these sources. It's kind of interesting. It's not the result that I wanted, but still kind of an interesting piece of information. Okay, so here is the source. It's a new day. I left it in the solution overnight, and it clearly dissolved off a lot of the metal exterior because it's that green color. I'm not sure what metal that is. Some first row transition metal. But I just checked with my detector. The activity of the source has not decreased at all. So clearly, the americium dioxide is under a thin layer of inert metal, so thin the alpha particles can get through, but because um, the metal is inert, maybe it's a very thin, like, gold or something layer, platinum layer, uh, very, very thin, uh, I can't dissolve it because of that layer. So, you know, I intended this to be a video where I produced a dilute solution of americium from all those sources and then dried it out to get a little spot of uh, americium chloride. It would still be too small to see, but enough to detect to make kind of a cooler americium sample from my element collection. But it didn't work out that way. Sadly, it turned out to be a video more on how not to dissolve americium off of these sources. A failed result is still a result. I still learned something. Dietrich out.